The Battle of Hurt Gen Forest was a series of fierce battles fought from 19 September 1944 to 10 February 1945 between U.S. and German forces during World War II in the Hurt Gen Forest about 50 square miles east of the Belgian-German border. It was the longest battle on German ground during World War II, and is the longest single battle the U.S. Army has ever fought. The U.S. commander's initial goal was to pin down German forces in the area to keep them from reinforcing the front lines further north in the Battle of Aachen, where the Allies were fighting a trench war between a network of fortified industrial towns and villages speckled with pillboxes, tank traps and minefields. A secondary objective may have been to outflank the front line. The Americans' initial tactical objectives were to take Schmidt and clear Montreal. In a second phase the Allies wanted to advance to the Ruhr River as part of Operation Queen. General Feldmarschall Walter Model intended to bring the Allied thrust to a standstill, while he interfered less in the day-to-day -day movements of units than at Arnhem. He still kept himself fully informed on the situation, slowing the Allies' progress, inflicting heavy casualties and taking full advantage of the fortifications the Germans called the Westfall, better known to the Allies as the Siegfried Line. The Hurt Gen Forest cost the U.S. First Army at least 33,000 killed and wounded, including both combat and non-combat losses. German casualties were 28,000. The city of Aachen in the north eventually fell on the 22nd of October at high cost to the U.S. Ninth Army, but they failed to cross the Ruhr or wrest control of its dams from the Germans. The battle was so costly that it has been described as an allied defeat of the first magnitude with specific credit given to model. The Germans fiercely defended the area because it served as a staging area for the 1944 Winter Offensive Watch on the Rhine, and because the mountains commanded access to the Ruhr Dam at the head of the Ruhr Reservoir. If the floodgates were opened, the resulting surge would flood low-lying areas downstream and temporarily prevent forces from crossing the river. The Allies failed to capture the area after several heavy setbacks and the Germans successfully held the region until they launched their last-ditch offensive into the Ardennes. The Battle of the Bulge gained widespread press and public attention, leaving the Battle of Hurt Gen Forest largely forgotten. Background By mid-September 1944, the Allied pursuit of the German army after the landings at Normandy was slowing down because of extended supply lines and German army rebuilding. The next strategic objective was to move up to the Rhine River along its entire length and prepare to cross it. Courtney Hodges' First Army experienced hard resistance pushing through the Aachen Gap and perceived a potential threat from enemy forces using the Hurt Gen Forest as a base. The U.S. 1st Infantry Division arrived in early October, joining elements of the 19th Corps and 7th Corps, which had encircled Aachen. Although the 1st Infantry Division called for the surrender of the German garrison in the city, German commander Oberst Gerhard Wilk refused to capitulate until the 22nd of October. It was also thought necessary to remove the threat posed by the Ruhr Dam. The stored water could be released by the Germans, swamping any forces operating downstream. In the view of the American commanders Bradley, Hodges and Collins, the direct route to the dam was through the forest. Military historians are no longer convinced by these arguments. Charles B. MacDonald, a U.S. Army historian and former company commander who served in the Hurt Gen battle, has described it as a misconceived and basically fruitless battle that should have been avoided. Geography The Hurt Gen forest occupies a rugged area between the Ruhr River and Aachen. The dense conifer forest is broken by few roads, tracks and fire breaks. Vehicular movement is restricted. In the autumn and early winter of 1944, the weather was cold and wet and often prevented air support. 
Ground conditions varied from wet to snow cover. The German defenders had prepared the area with block houses, minefields, barbed wire, and booby traps, hidden by the snow. There were also numerous bunkers in the area, mostly belonging to the deep defenses of the Siegfried Line, which were also centers of resistance. The dense forest allowed infiltration and flanking attacks and it was sometimes difficult to establish a front line or to be confident that an area had been cleared of the enemy. The small numbers of routes and clearings had also allowed German machine gun, mortar and artillery teams to pre-range their weapons and fire accurately. Apart from the bad and very cold weather, the dense forest and rough terrain also prevented proper use of the Allied air superiority, which presented great difficulties in spotting any targets. The American advantage in numbers, armor mobility, and air support was greatly reduced by weather and terrain. In the forest, a relatively small numbers of determined and prepared defenders could be highly effective. To exacerbate matters, as the American divisions took casualties, inexperienced recruits were brought up to the front as replacements. The impenetrable forest also limited the use of tanks and hid anti-tank teams equipped with Panzerfausts. Improvised rocket launches were made, using rocket tubes from aircraft and spare jeep trailers. Later in the battle, it proved necessary to blast tank routes through the forest. Transport was similarly limited by the lack of routes. At critical times, it proved difficult to reinforce or supply frontline units or to evacuate their wounded. The Germans were hampered by much the same difficulties, worsened because their divisions had already taken heavy losses on the retreat through France and were hastily filled up with untrained boys, unfit for service, and old men. Transport was also a problem, because of the difficult roads and the lack of trucks and fuel. Most supplies had to be manhandled to the front line, but the German defenders had the advantage in that their commanders and many of their soldiers had been fighting for some years and had learned the necessary tactics for fighting efficiently in winter and forested areas, whereas the Americans were often well-trained but inexperienced. The tall forest canopy also favored the defenders. Artillery fire was fused to detonate as tree bursts, while defenders were protected from shell fragments by their dug-in defensive positions. Attackers in the open were much more vulnerable. Conversely, U.S. mortar platoons needed clearings in which to work. These were few and dangerous, being pre-ranged by German troops, so mortar support was often unavailable to rifle platoons. Opposing armies the Hertgen Forest lay within the area of the U.S. First Army under the command of General Courtney Hodges. Responsibility fluctuated between the V Corps and VII Corps. At the start, the forest was defended by the German 275th and 353rd Infantry Divisions, under strength but well prepared, 5,000 men, and commanded by General Lieutenant Hans Schmidt. They had little artillery and no tanks. As the battle progressed, German reinforcements were added. American expectations that these troops were weak and ready to withdraw were not matched by events. U.S. Divisions 1st Infantry Division, 4th Infantry Division, 8th Infantry Division, 9th Infantry Division, 28th Infantry Division, 82nd Airborne Division, 83rd Infantry Division, 104th Infantry Division, 3rd Armored Division, 5th Armored Division, 2nd Ranger Battalion, 366th Fighter Group, German Divisions 85th Infantry Division, 89th Infantry Division, 275th Infantry Division, 344th Infantry Division, 347th Infantry Division, 353rd Infantry Division, 3rd Parachute Division, 3rd Panzer Grenadier Division, 116th Panzer Division, 12th Volksgrenadier Division, 47th Volksgrenadier Division, 246th Volksgrenadier Division, 272nd Volksgrenadier Division, 326th Volksgrenadier Division, 
Battle. First phase This phase concentrated on the town of Schmidt, astride an important German supply route within the southern part of the forest. The engagement began on 19 September 1944, with a probe by the U.S. 60th Infantry Regiment that entered the Hertgen Forest, but was beaten back by the terrain in opposition. On 5 October, the U.S. 9th Infantry Division attacked the town of Schmidt using the 60th and 39th Infantry Regiments while the 47th held a defensive position. The Monshaw Duran Road was quickly cut, but both regiments were slowed by defences and suffered significant casualties. The 60th's 2nd Battalion was reduced to a third after the first day. The 39th was halted at the Visa W.E.H. Creek. There were problems with narrow paths, air bursts in trees, and fire breaks which were blocked or enfiladed. Evacuation and supply was difficult or impossible. The slugging match continued. By 16 October, 3,000 yards had been gained at the cost of 4,500 casualties. The U.S. 28th Infantry Division, a Pennsylvania National Guard unit arrived on 16 October to relieve the battered 9th. The 28th Division was reinforced with the attached 707th Tank Battalion, Tracked M29 Weasel, Transport and Air Support. Of its three regiments, one was deployed to protect the northern flank, another to attack Germita, and the third to capture Schmidt. The main objective. The area had terrible terrain with the Cull Trail running along a deep river ravine. The terrain was not suited to tanks, despite the need for armor to support the infantry. The attack by the 28th Division started on 2 November. The defenders were expecting it and were ready. The U.S. 109th Infantry Regiment was impeded after 300 yards by an unexpected minefield. Pinned down by mortar and artillery fire harassed by local counterattacks. Just one mile was gained after two days, after which the 109th dug in and endured casualties. The U.S. 112th Infantry Regiment attacked Vossenach and the neighboring ridge, which were captured on 2 November. The 112th was then halted by strong defenses and difficult terrain. The U.S. 110th Infantry Regiment had to clear the woods next to the River Kyle, capture Simonskull, and maintain a supply route for the advance on Schmidt. Again, these were very difficult tasks due to weather, prepared defenses, determined defenders, and terrain. The weather prevented tactical air support until 5 November. The 112th finally captured Schmidt on 3 November, cutting the German supply route to Monshaw, but no American supply. Reinforcement or evacuation was possible, as the Carl Trail was blocked. A strong German counter-attack by tanks of the 116th Panzer Division and a chance encirclement by troops from the 89th Infantry Division rapidly expelled the Americans from Schmidt, and they were unable to counter-attack. For two days, the 112th remained hard-pressed to hold its positions outside Schmidt. At dawn on 4 November, the 112th, S. 2nd Battalion disintegrated after constant shelling and a fierce attack by the 116th Panzer Division and some men inadvertently fled, east, to be captured by the Germans. The rest of the battalion retreated to Kommerscheid. Realizing the gravity of the situation, 8 M4 Shermans of Company A, 707th Tank Destroyer Battalion attempted to cross the Kull Valley but only three actually made it across to support the beleaguered 112. The Americans retreated to Commerscheid where the 116th Panzer Division again attacked with tanks and infantry. The three American tanks destroyed three panzers, an infantryman's bazooka claimed another, and a P-47 Thunderbolt a fifth. The Germans were forced to retreat. The Americans held on and the fighting for Schmidt continued until 10 November. After that, the positions at Schmidt and the Carl Trail were abandoned. It wasn't until February 1945 that the 82nd Airborne Division permanently captured the Carl Trail and Schmidt. Of note, a German regimental doctor, Hauptmann Gunther Stuetgen, 
managed to negotiate an unofficial ceasefire with the Americans at the Carl Bridge from 7 to 12 November, in order to attend to the wounded of both sides. The lives of many American soldiers were saved by German medics. Second phase The second phase was part of Operation Queen, the Allied thrust to the Ruhr River. In this phase, the U.S. 4th Division was to clear the northern half of the forest between Skevenhut and Hertgen, capture Hertgen and advance to the Ruhr south of Durin. From 10 November, this would be 7 Corps' responsibility and it was part of the main 7th Corps effort to reach the Ruhr. The 4th Division was now fully committed to the Hurt Gen, although its 12th Infantry Regiment was already mauled from its action at Schmidt, leaving just two fully effective regiments to achieve the divisional objectives. U.S. 7th Corps was opposed by German forces, mainly from the 81st Corps, consisting of three understrength divisions. In the Hurt Gen, there was the 275th Infantry Division, 6,500 men with 150 artillery pieces. They were well dug in and prepared. The abstract of a U.S. report describes what happened. The 7th Corps, First Army attacked 16 November 1944, with 1st INFDIV, 4th INFDIV, 104th INFDIV, and CCR 5th AD to clear Wedgen Forest and the path of 1st Army to the Ruhr River. After heavy fighting, primarily by the 4th Infantry Division, 7 Corps attack ground to a halt. 5th Corps was committed on 21 November 1944, attacking with 8th INFDIV and CCR 5th AD. The 5th Corps managed to capture Wedgen after stiff fighting on 28 November 1944. The attack started on 16 November. The two infantry regiments attacked in parallel columns. The 8th along the northern edge of the forest towards Durin, the 22nd further south in parallel. The open flanks invited infiltration. Similar tactics elsewhere in Hurt Gen had invited disaster. Attacks by the 8th Infantry Regiment on Rother Weh Creek hit heavy resistance and were repulsed with heavy losses. The 22nd failed to take Raven's Hedge beaten back by heavy machine gun and artillery fire along the fire breaks. After three days, there were 300 losses, including officers and NCOs. By the 18th of November, tanks were deemed essential, so engineers blasted tank routes through the forest. Communications and logistics remained a problem, so the next day the attack paused to allow resupply and evacuation of the wounded. German reinforcements arrived from 344th and 353rd Infantry Divisions and resistance stiffened further. Responsibility was returned to 5th Corps and, on 21 November, 8th Division attacked the Weisser Weh Valley, continuing toward Hertgen. The 121st Infantry Regiment hit heavy defences immediately. Despite armoured support from the 10th Tank Battalion, daily advances were less than 600 yards. Hertgen was taken on 29 November and the battle continued to Klein Howe, one mile north. The final action in the Hertgen forest was at Langerwehr Harmer Road, on the northeastern edge of the forest. Two American companies took the village, but they were later destroyed in a German counter-attack. Later, the secret daily report of the Supreme High Command of the German Army of the 27th of November stated that in the old Langerwehr penetration area, the U.S. Army won terrain. Elements of the 8th and the 28th Infantry Divisions then advanced on Brandenburg. The 28th Division, just like the 9th before it, also took heavy casualties during its stay in the Hertgen Forest. On 14 November, the 2nd Ranger Battalion arrived to relieve elements of the 112th Infantry Regiment. On 6 December, the Rangers moved on Bergstein and subsequently took the strategic position of Hill 400 from defending troops from 980th Grenadier Regiment of the 272nd Volksgrenadier Division. Shortly thereafter, on 12 December, the towns of Gay and Strasse were taken by American forces. 
Military actions at the Siegfried Line up to 15 December alone brought death, injury or captivity to more than 250,000 soldiers from both sides. The 1st and 9th U.S. Army suffered 57,039 battle casualties, 71,654 non-battle casualties, i.e., accidents, diseases such as pneumonia, trench foot, frostbite, and trauma. German armed forces are presumed to be 12,000 dead, 95,000 captured, and an unknown number of wounded.